Good day everyone, welcome back to East Lebatan. Last episode we built a train underpass under the skyway to ease the traffic in front of the shopping mall. And we also built the Philippine International Convention Center, also known as PICC. In this episode we are going to build a commercial and entertainment district surrounding the stadium. This place is going to be based on a real life district in Metro Manila called Cubao. Cubao is located at the intersection of Aurora Boulevard and EDSA in Quezon City. As you can see here, I've already pre-built EDSA. EDSA stands for Epifanio de los Santos Avenue. It's a main artery that wraps around Metro Manila in a semi-circle fashion for about 22 kilometers, or roughly 14 miles. It seems like a very short distance, but it will take you at least an hour to drive from end to end on a good day. During rush hour, forget it. It's complete with an MRT line and what we call bus carousel, which is a poor man's version of the bus rapid transit system or BRT. But hey, it works, so I'll take it. And later on we will place an MRT station over here just like in real life. The first landmark on our list is the Farmer's Plaza. It is one of the oldest department stores in the country. It is occupied mostly by cheap merchandise, lifestyle outlets, and fast food chains. I remember coming over here as a young kid and going to the arcade on the fourth floor. It's also where I bought my very first fake pair of Nikes. So just keep in mind that this is not going to be an accurate replica of Cobal since we are limited to what's available to us in the workshop. Think of it as an impression. Just like you see here, I'm using a Chinese commercial building and I'm just trying my best to cover up the signs with some procedural objects and billboards.
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a pure gold. No, it's not a jewelry store. It's one of the largest chain of supermarkets in the Philippines. Think of it as Walmart in the US, Aldi in Germany, and Lotte in South Korea. You can easily spot them from a distance by their bright green and yellow color. So I tried to find a building with a rounded facade, and I found this theater made by Sven Berlin and Josh which I thought was the perfect fit for this supermarket. I just converted them to a procedural object to make it look like this. And if you notice, there is a Marriott hotel in the back. I was thinking it is connected to the pure gold via an elevator. Then I thought that the rooftop of the pure gold would be the best spot to put a swimming pool lounge area for the guests of the hotel. And behind Marriott is the amusement park that was made in episode 21. So if you want to see Voltus 5 and Godzilla go at it, you should check out this episode over here. Our next landmark is the ACT Theater. Being located at the busy intersection of Aurora Boulevard and EDSA, it's really hard to miss this large structure. Nowadays, it's a site for a secondhand goods store and a women's dorm. The facade which used to hold the posters of the movies being shown in the theater are now used as ad space. There are several famous movie houses in Cabao that used to be the hit back in the 70s all the way to the early 90s. But they all died when movie theaters in the shopping malls started to become a thing. Some of them still play movies, but they only show low budget films or what we call bomba films. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
real life, this place is still under construction. It's going to be a condominium complex by a real estate developer called Phil Invest. I've put another department store in the corner called Isetan, which was pretty popular in the 80s and the 90s. I've also put a billboard in honor of Heidelin Diaz, the very first and only Filipino athlete to earn the gold medal in the Olympics. She won the medal in weightlifting of 127 kilograms in clean and jerk event in the past Tokyo Olympics. So kudos to you Heidelin, mabuhay ka and we are very proud of you. So as I was finishing up with the Isatan, I noticed that people were jumping in and out of the condo. Like this guy over here, he's acting like he's part of the Avengers or something. The reason this is happening is because I raised the building's elevation to fit the base structure, which I imagine would be another department store with a movie theater inside. So to fix this problem, I made a pedestrian path that goes to the top floors so people won't act like they're in the matrix. Or are they? Have you ever had that feeling where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? I've always wondered why is this place called Kubal? I found a story on the internet which says, back in the day, people saw a hunchback in this place. The Tagalog word for hunchback is Kuba. So that's why people started calling it Kubal, which to me sounds like a total load of BS. So I talked to some of the elders and their story sounds more convincing and plausible. So the story goes like this. Long time ago, due to its proximity to the Marikina River, Cubao was a wetland and the perfect breeding ground for the Philippine water buffalo, or what we call Calabao. In English and Spanish, they call it Carabao. Not to be confused with the North American caribou, they are totally unrelated. Anyways, back in the Spanish era, the old name for Calabao farm was Cubawan. And when the American colonizers came along and set up an army base nearby called Camp Murphy, now called Camp Aguinaldo, the Americans simply shortened its name to Cubao, and it stuck. That story might be BS2, who knows, but I like that story better than the other one. What about you? If you heard anything different, let us know in the comment down below. So why did I pick Cubao for all the places? Well, back in the 80s and early 90s, Cubao was the commercial and entertainment center of Metro Manila. I thought of it as the Times Square or Shibuya of the Philippines. But now to the eyes of most people, Cubao is just a long bypass to a more modern districts like Ortigas, Makati, 
and Bonifacio Global City. It seems dark and gloomy now with all the elevated tracks and foot bridges and when the sun goes down its dark alleys are usually filled with con artists, thieves and prostitutes. Luckily with this game we can reimagine what Cuba could look like if it kept up with its rival districts. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to build a bus terminal. There are many provincial bus terminals in Cubao which greatly contributes to the congestion of EDSA. This led to the moving of the provincial buses to a more centralized terminal hub called BITX, which we will try to recreate in the future episode. Next to the terminal is a hotel called New York Hotel. It is one of the oldest hotel in Quezon City. And at the ground floor is a 7-Eleven and of course a Jollibee. There you have it guys, the northern half of Cobao. Next episode we are going to work on the other side of EDSA. Let me know what you guys think of this build and if you have any suggestions let me know in the comment down below. I read all of your comments and suggestions, I apologize if I haven't done your suggestion. Making an episode just takes a really long time for me nowadays. And if you've been with me for a little while, thank you so much for your support and thank you for staying. If you are new to this channel and you like this video, make sure to subscribe and smash that like button. Otherwise, mabuhay and see you next time.